Due to the quarantine situation, there's no guest introducer today. So just a quick thought on the hoarding. If you fall into one of the camps of the people that run into a store and fill your shopping cart with food, or if you're in the other camp who runs into the store and fills your shopping cart up with toilet paper, you cause quite a dilemma. The people that have the toilet paper have no food and they really won't even need toilet paper and the people that have all the food will really need that toilet paper and not have it. So hoard wisely or just uh, think about your fellow people in crisis. Let's take a look at the text box effect. And first we need text, obviously, and I will center it. And um, let's uh, find a font that we like. That's not really one that I like, but you know, it's okay. So let's call that good enough. And the um, next thing is we need a rectangle. So I'll um, first change the color of my text before I create that rectangle. And let's call that good. Okay, so alt click on the tool here rectangle tool and we got a rectangle in the center and let's push it behind. So the next thing is I'm going to click on this little plus sign and add a clicking on all and go to bounding box. Okay, so what this will do is it'll create a bounding box based on whatever we drag into it, which I'm going to drag the text into it now. So grab your text just drag it on the bounding box and set it to the input shape because you don't don't really have any other choices. All right, so now our bounding box, we can't really see it, but our bounding box technically is drawing an invisible shape around um, the text. And if we connect, let's alt click that and then double click on our rectangle. So the size of our bounding box needs to get connected to our rectangle. So let's go to our size here is our bounding box and then we only have a, a few different options here uh, we have scale and we have size let's drag it on here and that is something that we probably don't want so let's undo that let's go from here and drag it here okay so that option looks a lot better and basically that is the majority of the effect the rest is just kind of styling and Let's zoom in here so we can see it better. So whatever our text is, if I alt click on my type tool and type something else, we've got a text box around our text. So uh, it, it fits very precisely, which isn't always the best. And if I go to my bounding box, I have options to expand it if I want to. So now whatever we type, it's always gonna be in there and Okay, so this is a good way to have your text always stand out from the background. And um, another thing is we can do the opposite. If we wanna have some overlap of our text, which can be interesting, we could do something like that. I could click my text and I can move it a little bit. Let's say I want it kind of off center like that. And yeah, so we could even change our fonts and everything will still work. And yeah, I kind of like, I kind of like the offset just adds a little visual interest, maybe not that much. So I'll go with maybe something like that. And um, so the uh, the next thing is I could select my bounding box and I'll just alt double click on it. I'm sorry, not the bounding box, the rectangle shape. I'll double click on that and I'll go to my filters and I'm going to add a linear wipe. So this is something you could use kind of as a transition animation if you want. I'm just gonna use it to add a little bit of more visual interest. So I'm gonna alt double click on it and I'm gonna change the rotation, maybe something like that. And then I could adjust the completion if I want. So you could see how you could animate your uh, background text box on like that. Uh, then I'm gonna go back, alt double click on the rectangle and add another filter, which is the Venetian blinds here. And I'll click on that so we can adjust the angle. Whoops, that's the wrong one. I'll, I'll double click on this just to, um, 
right so i'm clicking on the wrong wrong thing that's the venetian blind there and i can rotate it like that and if i want i could adjust the uh, width if i want finer lines and basically do whatever you want so now what i did in the example just copied this rectangle shape by pressing Control C, Control V, and now we've got a second rectangle which is on top of everything. So let's bring it down by dragging it to the bottom, and um, let's move it a little bit, maybe something like that. And now just change the color. So let's Alt double click on that, and then we got the fill, and we can go with um, some color that we like. Maybe that yellow works. And um, uh, also in the example, I had an outline around the text. So let's just do that quickly, select the type, click on our outline. We can make it a different color. Go to fill white or maybe maybe light gray. And uh, usually I want my outlines behind my text something like that and I'll go in here I'll double click on it and increase the width if I see any parts kind of sticking out from sharp corners and just reduce the um, what is it the miter limit if you see any weird things poking out uh, also I like to um, move it a little bit and um, I'm gonna start dragging the miter limit down slightly just the point where it starts beveling some of the edges I, th I think that'll work and maybe I'll move it a little bit here so that's kind of gives you a little bit of a more interesting look and um, yes yeah, so let me zoom out here so we can now animate this by going to the type shape and we could do things like um, spacing in our box updates we can uh, we talked about before we could change the size and everything stays with it uh, what else can we do rotation this is kind of interesting if you want to rotate you can get some interesting looks that way and um, we could also if we want a second line i'll just delete the space here i press shift enter so i get a second line and then enter without shift to accept that so we could have multiple lines and this is kind of interesting you could do an animation on the line spacing and get this kind of effect okay so that is um working with text boxes how you could work procedurally and have interesting backgrounds for your type